Once upon a time, when you turned on a computer, you could tell what operating system you were using by looking at it. They were visually different. They used different metaphors. They had different designs. Even the ones that were laid out the same looked fundamentally totally different. When you were using an Amiga, you knew. When you were using Windows 3.195, any of them, you knew. When you use OS 2 or or early days in, in various Unix desktop environments or early days in various Linux desktops and window managers, you knew what you were using. When you used Atari Gem, you knew. When you use an old Macintosh, you did not think for a second, hmm, am I really using Windows 95 here? They were different. They looked different. They felt different. They had a different quality, a different crispness. Everything was different. And that was a good thing. That was awesome. That was fun. That was interesting. You saw different companies, different people, different projects trying out different things. And sometimes those things fell flat. Sometimes one desktop was objectively a bit prettier than another, but they were different and they were interesting. Nowadays, here we are, here we sit in 20 friggin 24 and every single system is slowly kind of just looking like every other one. And there's a few little exceptions here and there, but let's dial in on the, the free software Linuxy side of things for a minute. Because all of the major desktop environments are fundamentally kind of just looking like variations on a very small theme. And what, what brought this about to me is I, I I'm going to bring up a screenshot here. Uh, this is uh, from System76. If you go to System76.com, they're creating a brand new desktop environment they call Cosmic. And a good name. Good name. I like the name. And I'm a big fan of System76 And as a general rule of thumb. They, they make good hardware. Uh, they, they make hardware that they're trying to make support a lot of freedom with open source hardware schematics. They're even making kind of an open source laptop awesome like open source hardware like they're publishing the schematics part awesome i want to high five them until the end of time for all of that but they're making this new desktop environment named cosmic and putting aside whether or not i like the designs that they have and whatnot is almost irrelevant what is relevant is that it looks just like everything else we've got I mean, I mean, I don't see a difference. I've been following their updates, and this is from their their most re recent uh, blog post showing some screenshots of the work they're doing on Cosmic. And I don't doubt that the work is incredible. I'm sure that they're doing a fantastic job at it. But what they're recreating is what we already essentially have in GNOME and KDE. The big major desktop environments on the Linux side of things fundamentally looked at, look and act the same. Uh, bear with me now. What you see on the screen in front of you is the Cosmic File Browser. It's pretty straightforward, right? Well, now let's look at the KDE File Browser. Again, pretty straightforward. List of things on the left, uh, like recent areas and... and, and uh, you know, home documents, downloads, all that sort of thing on the left. And on the right, your list of files or your icon view of files. Same on KDE. This is from the Kubuntu feature tour page. And I actually, I want to take a side side note here. This is, if you go to kubuntu.org, and Kubuntu is a KDE respin of Ubuntu that uses KDE instead of GNOME. Okay, cool. Their feature tour, their number one feature, like literally, I kid you not, the feature that they say is the most important of all the features that they could possibly tell you about is that you can browse your files easily. And then they use this screenshot. What operating system have they been using where they're like, it's so hard to browse files? I'm sorry, but this screenshot of this file browser looks a little more complicated 
of a way to browse my files than, I don't know, the Mac System 6 file browser. Or honestly, I think the old Windows 3.1 file manager looked a little bit nicer than this. Now, those are all personal preferences, but we're talking about no real improvement in ease of browsing files in the last 20, 30, possibly 40 years. Come on now, that's your best foot forward. Whoever's creating the Kubuntu feature tour page needs to up their game because here's the thing, Kubuntu is actually a pretty decent Linux distribution, right? If you like if you like Ubuntu and you like KDE, it's a perfect fit. There's a lot to talk about that's actually pretty interesting. The reality is the KDE project has a bunch of applications that they could put forward. The Caligra suite and, and KDE and Live, and there's a whole bunch of stuff in there that's pretty unique and compelling and interesting. The file browser is not it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. Anyway, m moving on. Let's look over at GNOME for a second. Here's the GNOME file browser. Again, same exact list of things on the left, icons on the right, very minor differences. You know, some of these are with light mode and some of these are with dark mode, but they all tend to support both light and dark mode. And they all look kind of the same when you toggle a little into light or dark mode. Some of them have a little bit more empty space. Some of them have a little less empty space on the screen. But otherwise, the features are the same, the layout is the same, the general overall look is the same. And, and this, this is, this is a, a constant running theme. Here, if you look through uh, the cosmic list of features, here is, here is the cosmic desktop environment's settings for setting up your touchpad. Note the way the buttons look, the general layout, the curved appearance and whatnot. Okay, well now let's hop back over here to GNOME and let's scroll around for a second here. I bet we'll find a, a screenshot that, oh, here we go. Same exact look and feel. Same button styles, same general text styles. It might even be the same font. Like it looks the same. Like, okay, let's go back over here. See one's in light mode and one's in dark mode. But the only difference I see between this screenshot of Cosmic and this screenshot of GNOME in terms of layout and style and structure and, and all of it is, well, the GNOME screenshot's a little crisper, but I think that was just due to JPEG compression. <laughs> see what I'm saying here? It's the same thing over and over and over again. So one has to ask, why? create something new that's the same as the thing that the other person created. When it's all open source and all of these projects are having a difficult time securing funding, I've talked about this in the past, the amount of money that goes into GNOME and KDE is pennies. We're talking like they get in a year like a million something dollars. No, 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 that's not true. That's not true. I want to say it's a few hundred thousand dollars. It's it's very small. Uh, go, go look at my article. I've got it over at Lunduke. I should have brought it up. But lunduke.locals.com and you, you search for how much uh, money do open source projects actually make. Search for something like that and you'll you'll find the article quickly. And I go through all the major open source and free software foundations and projects and how much money they bring in per year. I think I compared uh, the year 2022 in that article because I, I wrote this sometime last year. And it, it, GNOME and KTE were the least funded open source projects, major open, open source projects I could find. And these are the major desktop environments that are powering the computers that use uh, that, 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 that were used by every Linux distro on the planet. It's, it's insanity to me. Now, I, I'm all for forking and going your own way. I, I'm a big advocate for that. If you've got a weird and wacky idea, fork and go nuts. You know, take the Linux kernel and do something weird with it, right? Take, take GNOME, fork it, and go crazy. Do something weird. If you've got an idea, go nuts. I'm not necessarily opposed to fragmentation. There are problems with fragmentation, right? Because the more, the more spread out our resources are, the less we can focus on a particular task and goal. But the reality is, Part of what makes Linux and open source and all the various open and free and net BSDs out there kind of awesome is that people can go their own wild and wacky ways.
They can do something that I may think is ridiculous, but they thought was cool, so they did it. Heck, they may even have thought it was ridiculous, but they were able to do it. And I think that sort of thing is amazing. But when I look at like cosmic, let, let's bring let's bring this back up for a second here. When I look at the cosmic desktop environment, it's GNOME. It's a rewritten GNOME. It is. And anyone saying it's anything other than that is deluding themselves. Are there probably little tweaks and differences? Maybe even improvements here and there? Yeah, probably, assuredly. They're different, so that's gonna happen. There's gonna be places where it's better and worse. But could some of those improvements be put into GNOME and achieved the same sort of goals that perhaps the team at System76 were trying to achieve in the first place, but with less resources applied to it and possibly benefiting more people? Almost assuredly. This is the same sort of problem that Ubuntu ran into. Ubuntu decided early on, you remember Unity? Unity started... And I don't remember how many of you were, I don't know if how many of you were around back then, but Unity started for netbooks. It was a customized, low resolution user interface that started as one guy's hobby project for netbooks. Remember those little like $99, like the triple E PC 700s, those little, little atom powered dinky little, little sub notebooks. It was specifically for those. And that's it. That was the whole point of Unity. But then, you know, Mark Shuttleworth running Canonical, running Ubuntu, he looked at that and said, there's potential here. This sort of UI is what we want powering all of Ubuntu with some modifications. So they said, well, you know what? We, they looked around and they said what the GNOME team was doing at the time, they were just about to launch GNOME 3 and GNOME Shell. Gnome 2 was still the de facto of the land, right? This was way back when. And Gnome 3 and Gnome Shell achieved like 97% of what Ubuntu wanted to do with Unity. Well, so they thought, let's let's just submit patches to Gnome Shell and, and tweak it to, to make it do what we want to do. There was some resistance within the within some of the GNOME development and design people. They, they just didn't fully agree with some of the smaller changes, but everything that Canonical wanted to do, they could do with extensions, so they didn't want to reincorporate all the sweeping changes into the core of GNOME shell. They, wanted, they, they suggested that the Ubuntu team do what they wanted to do with GNOME extensions. The, the Ubuntu team decided, we don't want to do that. So we're going to go our own way entirely, even though the ideas that they were really pushing behind Unity, they were recreating 99 plus percent of the work that the GNOME team was doing completely. Now, there were differences, undeniably. There were differences between Unity and GNOME Shell back then. But they could have saved themselves a ton of time, a ton of heartache, and improved GNOME along the way had they taken a different approach. Had they said, you know what, this is all open source. We should at the very least just, just have a, a version of what they're working on for us and, and maybe apply some customization patches on top of it, right? And ultimately, that's what Ubuntu ended up doing anyway when it turned out to be a monumental and colossal mistake to throw huge resources into the Unity desktop environment. It, it didn't end up being maintainable. They didn't have the resources to maintain it and keep it to be to being bug-free and performant long-term, so they just went back to GNOME eventually in the first place. Eventually. It, they should have done that in the first place. And here we have again... In System76, they're creating Cosmic, which just is GNOME. I mean, and uses a lot of GNOME technologies, and it just looks like GNOME. It looks like GNOME, it acts like GNOME, it walks like GNOME, and it squawks like GNOME, and it smells like GNOME when it toots, so it's probably just GNOME, right? Except it's not. They're rewriting, they've rewritten a whole big parts of it from scratch. And, and they're not stopping with just all of this stuff. They're creating their own 
App Store. The Cosmic Store is what they're calling it. Uh, here's a screenshot that uh, Jeremy Solar, their, their kind of lead dev guy over there, has posted. Cosmic Store is coming along nicely. Um, he's got some, some work to do on it, but, but there's the screenshot. There's the screenshot right right there. And does it look fundamentally totally different than every other app store on the planet? No, it looks it looks like a, a variation on what GNOME and Ubuntu and honestly, even Apple are doing. It's just pretty simple. I got the Google categories on the left. You got a search and you got a you got an install button that looks like the install button of the Google Play Store. I I just don't see a fundamental difference here. And is there is there anything big that's really happening here that's that's pushing things forward? No, no, there there just is not. There just is, uh, several people are going to yell at me and they're going to go, no, 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 no. There's good. Re-. It's all the same stuff, the same usability, the same look and feel. So what my suggestion is to the people at System seventy six who do good work and are smart as heck, uh. Don't waste your time on this. I get the the urge. You have your own hardware. You want to have your own experience out of the box. You know, the, the, the Apple thing where you ship the hardware and the software and it's yours and you, 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 you fine tune the experience all around. You can do that with GNOME or KDE or whatnot. You can still do that and, and, and be part of those bigger projects, which are struggling to get funding and, and support. They really are. And so the more, the more different organizations and companies go their own way, they're one dooming themselves to probably failing in the long run, because I think cosmic is going to go end up going the way of unity eventually. I'm sorry to say, it's probably true. And two, they're meaning that they're making sure that the desktop environment that they're essentially fully copying. I mean, it's it's a carbon copy of GNOME as far as I can tell from all the screenshots and my time in, in running the, the early code of it. They're ensuring that GNOME is getting less resources and it's already struggling to get by. The Gnome Foundation makes pennies, man. Pennies. It, it makes a pittance. It, the Gnome Foundation plus the, K, plus the KDE, whatever its full name for their organization is, make about one-third to one-quarter combined than Thunderbird, the email client, does in terms of donations. Go look that up. I, I've, I've got that in my articles as well. And, and it's, it's, it's insane. It's absolutely insane when so many desktops, so many operating systems use those, those pieces of software, especially GNOME, as their core. Absolutely insane. But what's even more crazy to me than all of that is how the same they all look. They all look friggin the same <laughs> this is the this is again the katie the, the kabuntu.org feature tour the second biggest feature they've got is browse okay let's take a second to look at this this is ridiculous browse images yes they have a way to look at a picture <laughs> open and read documents yep they have a pdf viewer it's a real bare bones thing surf the internet with firefox no one's been ever able to surf the internet with firefox before nice I mean, come on, guys. Chat right from the desktop with your friends. I've never used a computer to chat before. Oh, the screenshot is of an IRC client that hasn't yet been configured and isn't in use. Who is creating this feature tour? Like, like, oh, my gosh. I can use Kubuntu to run an IRC client? Oh, now I got to take a look at it because I've never seen a modern Linux distribution that can run an IRC client. Multimedia made easy. It shows video LAN VLC running with no video loaded. It's a huge, huge screenshot of VLC running with no video loaded. Multimedia made easy with Kubuntu. Now, did Ubuntu did Kubuntu make it easy? No. It just installed sudo apt-get install VLC. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, nothing was ever done that before. Come on. It, and music experience at a different level. I'm like, okay, at least it's not a bad little music player, but come, come on, guys. Complete. Okay, here, here's something that I think is ridiculous. KDE has the Caligra office suite. It is a unique and interesting office suite. The UI is a bit different than LibreOffice and Microsoft Office. Its feature set is a bit different. It's interesting. Now, it's got some downsides and some upsides, but it's different. Kubuntu does not install Caligra Suite. They install LibreOffice, just like every other distro. So it's not at all interesting. But what screenshot do they use? Well, they use a screenshot that looks really ugly using some sort of untitled, poorly formatted with weird background colored template. <laughs> yeah. Whoever is marketing these Linux distributions needs to be taken out behind the woodshed and shot. <laughs> and, and no, before anyone goes and quotes me on that, I am not literally advocating for the murder of whoever put these web pages together. Um, okay, but seriously, these all they all look the same. Where is the difference? Now, there used to be in the Linux desktop environment a, a real distinct difference in the systems. Uh, if you go look up ROX desktop, R-O-X, Go, go look that up, ROX desktop. You'll find a desktop environment with uh, a, a way of packaging applications and file browser and everything that was unique and interesting for Linux, right? Uh, go, go look at things like CDE. Go look at, I mean, literally, go look at XFCE. Look at some of the tiling window managers. Out. There are some unique things happening, but the major desktop environments and the organizations that are that are copying those desktop environments are doing not anything really new. It's kind of just rehashes. It's just tweaking on the same. Well, this, this year we'll make the buttons a little more 3D looking and next year we'll make them a little more flat looking. The year after we'll make them more square looking and the year after that they'll be more round looking. But otherwise there's not a lot of change going on here. It's kind of boring. It's not as fun. I, there, it's really difficult. If you load up the cosmic desktop environment on Pop! OS and then put it next to Ubuntu running GNOME, for the average user, they would not be able to tell much of any difference at all. And even for the experienced user, they're probably going to be like, well, these are pretty much, if they're not the same, they're copy. One is a copy of the other. And you're seeing that more and more. And I, it, it makes me a little bit concerned because we have all the downsides of fractured, of a fractured marketplace where people are putting their efforts into, into multiple different projects. They're not focusing, they're not making as much progress as they could. People are split between more and more projects, which means there's less money flowing in. But we don't have any of the upside of the fracturing. We don't have the weirdness. We don't have the quirkiness. We don't have the round pegs and the square holes. We don't have people trying new things. And that's kind of sad. I, to the System76 people, to the GNOME people, to the KDE people, try something new. Really, try something new. Or it, it stop copying each other. I know great art, art, artists, you know, copy, steal, blah, 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 the quote. You know, the thing, but try something new. I, it, it's just, it, it gets to the point where when I start looking at these, I don't see value in reviewing them. Like I've seen people reviewing the latest KDE Plasma release and talking about the latest GNOME release and people like, oh, new version of Cosmic is, is getting ready to ship. It's going to happen. And I, what am I going to cover? New desktop environment looks fundamentally the same as desktop environment that it was copying, but luckily has additional unnecessary bugs because they fractured and, and forked instead of just contributing back to the project that they copied in the first place. That was open source, so there wasn't exactly their competitor. I, I don't know. I, I, 
the, I can rewrite that article 57 times every year, or you guys can come up with something new. If you disagree with me, feel free to disagree with me. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do declare and broadcast.